Yael of Elnet Israel and an international relations expert. And uh, there is a saying in Israeli politics, what you see from, he, from here, you didn't see from there. And this new government, uh, perhaps uh, finding some uh, difficulty meeting its agenda, especially on the area of settlement construction and cracking down on that Palestinian uh, building. Yeah, it's all the difference between being in opposition and being at the wheel. Uh, when uh, uh, Smotrich and Ben Gvir were in the opposition, they made all those commitments and promises uh, about boosting uh, settlement construction and dismantling uh, illegal Palestinian construction. By the way, it's not only the building you mentioned in East Jerusalem, it's also the Bedouin illegal construction on Khan al Ahmar, who's, the, you know, dismantling has been pushed off by Netanyahu himself so many times. But the real question is today, I think, uh, Khaled, is uh, how long are Smotrich and Ben Gvir going to be willing to swallow uh, bitter pills uh, just to keep the coalition together? Well, I want to say, you know, Ben Gvir may have put a calendar date on that. He said, I think, three months if he is not able to make a difference in that and maybe some of the other agenda items he has relating to police. And that's an interesting statement because, you know, he cares a lot about his electorate and he knows that if he doesn't believe, he doesn't deliver, uh, if he becomes too pragmatic uh, to the taste of his voters, that might cost him uh, politically and uh, even uh, put an end to his political life. So he's playing a very delicate game. Like on the one hand, you know, they feel that they hit the jackpot with this coalition. But on the other hand, if they go along with Netanyahu, uh, who used at least to be a pragmatist uh, and to be pragmatic, then it might cost them dearly politically. And they might, at least Ben Gvir, uh, you know, he's not, he's not a pragmatic politician. Uh, he might just decide to uh, leave the coalition uh, which would create a new political crisis. So he set a date, as you as you said, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see in in his actual decision what he decides. He prefers a coalition, or if he thinks about his uh, voters. I guess one qu- one question, Emmanuel, is with if Benjamin Netanyahu can show them something in exchange, perhaps some uh, sign of progress, for example, toward expanding the Abraham Accords, some sign of that from countries like Saudi Arabia or others. Whether he'd be able to delay that showdown with the hard right of his coalition. I doubt it because they really don't care about international relations. They really don't care about the Abraham Accords. They only care about settlements, the West Bank construction. They have a very narrow agenda. And they wouldn't be bought off by Netanyahu by saying, look, you know, as Netanyahu did, by the way, with his previous coalition, when he uh, actually uh, uh, walked away from his uh, commitment to an export of the West Bank, and in exchange decided, you know, to sign the normalization agreements with the UAE and Bahrain. But at the time, he had a different type of coalition. This wouldn't go with uh, Ben Gvir and Smotrich. Uh, they really don't care about foreign relations. They care about the narrow agenda, and that's why I really don't believe that Netanyahu would be, uh, you know, would be able to sweet talk them uh, into giving up on construction for the sake of Israel's normalization with another Arab country such as Saudi Arabia. Right. All right, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ravon, it's going to be interesting to see how this develops. Uh, Thank you for that. Thank you.